Okay, the Brotherhood. Here's what's up. Focus on figuring out how seven worse spirits come in and what that looks like. Figure that out. And here's a hint. It, they come in through pride and an atmosphere of strength. I have seen gatherings that ended up that end up drawing violent voiced spirits and people who are friends with those violent voices. I have seen gatherings that draw in those who tend to be quick to judge and evaluate in a way that's not good. I have seen movements gathering bringing in those who are focused on fun pleasant easy thrilling things and they have been brought in through godly open doors but then have not chosen to obey the gospel okay so number one, I want you to figure out how seven demons worse come in. And I'm giving you a hint that they come in through strength and pride and through omissive sins, through overlooking things that are primary, just like not paying attention to them. Those ignored scriptures, it is written this thing and it is written that thing and how come we don't actually focus on that okay so number one figure out how seven demons worse come in and I'm telling you they're gonna hide in a Christianity costume a costume of religious practice but they are going to block omissive areas and what you want to do to keep those spirits out is actually go to the portions of the church that are good at the things that you have been blocking. Because you will, just like my mother was led by the church into being silent about the Holy Spirit, I was led into decades of ignorance. Decades. You can stay in a denominational structure or a movement or a group of people not just for decades, for generations. It might be two generations before somebody said, hey, you know, the, the emperor doesn't have any clothes on about a certain topic or issue. So number one, figuring out how seven demons worse come in and the parameters on that. Number two, what is it to obey the gospel? Okay. The good news is that God showed up in human form. 1 Corinthians 15 is a proof thing. First and foremost, there's a person that was awaited that showed up as predicted and came, he was a public figure who was publicly executed and he came back from the dead and was seen by many people publicly. So fulfilled predictions and eyewitnesses to resurrection. Fulfilled predictions, eyewitnesses to resurrection. That has nothing to do with miraculous powers, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, healing, and miracle signs and wonders. Those are the two things that are referred to as primary in 1 Corinthians 15 and in that place and in that place where Paul says, this is my gospel, which is in, um, I, I believe that's uh, 2 Timothy 4, 8, or 1 Timothy 2, 4, or something like that. He says, you know, this is my gospel, which is why I'm in these chains. 
he's only, he only mentions the he mentions Messiah, which is a word that we need to define. It means the awaited supernatural visitor from the other realm. The awaited supernatural visitor from the other realm descended from David as predicted and resurrected from the dead. So he's saying the supernatural visitor, the supernatural visitor, the supernatural visitor that the whole world has been waiting for showed up as predicted and showed that he could overcome death and was seen by a bunch of people. He doesn't even mention in that the miracle signs and wonders. He's using miracle signs and wonders as his proof and to draw attention. But his primary teaching, people come to God in a million different ways. But when you're doing repetitive teaching, you teach the three things. Fulfilled predictions, eyewitnesses to resurrection and ascension, and power to do miracle signs and wonders of every sort and then the power to transfer that power to other human beings this is so important these are the three primary wow proofs that Jesus of Nazareth is deity okay so number one figure out how seven demons worse come in and camp out undetected number two Understand what obey the gospel actually means. I mean, honestly, honestly, two precious people that I dearly love and respect. Todd White and Bill Johnson. Those two are missing some points of obeying the gospel and it's not even that difficult to discern that you can see that as you look at those that are gathered together around them and this is not a condemnation of either of them this is a call to y'all to get complete to get complete there's a friend of mine that loves watching TV and drinking soda pop and eating potato chips. And there's a danger because as he gets into his great strengths with Christ, he can actually kick back, chill and watch the fireworks from Christ and kind of like drink soda pop and eat potato chips and, you know, kick back and roll on his laurels or his strengths that are actually just a gift from God and there are other things to look at so the point is don't become complacent understand the responsibilities of the narrow path and you will be hearing from me about how learning to be like an angel learning to be single like Jesus, single like a child, learning to deeply respect the people who are in singlehood from their childhood, and talking about the reality that you can be high on the Holy Spirit, high on the Holy Spirit, and live an entire life without a marriage bed. You can live that powerful. And as well as that, if you feel called to the marriage bed when it's time, when it's the season, that's a great and awesome thing for you. But if the children are not filled with a respectful awe and joy, that they're already like Jesus in singleness, already like an angel in singleness, and learning how to talk about the physiology and the things that lead into the marriage bed in a way that's candid and fun, and causes that whole picture of the boyfriend, girlfriend, and marriage stuff to be minimized as just an ordinary common thing. They can reach toward the more uncommon thing if they're led to of singleness and Holy Spirit. But if the stuff of boyfriend, girlfriend, and marriage bed and marrying is turned into like this whole 
fairy tale and all of these details and all this is saturated with like, you know, these thrills about, you know, who's your person and da da da, da like all that kind of stuff. If all those things are going on around a child and they're not getting a regular commentary about the awe and joy of walking like an angel from child into Jesus reality into eternity. If there isn't awe about that reality, the children are going to drop the ball. They're actually going to potentially defile themselves or choose things that are lesser because of the atmosphere around them and the lack of really powerful parenting that teaches about sex and honesty and spirits in a way that's really nice. So, stay tuned. Bless you, Brotherhood, and understand that you are called to help each and every person on the inside walk like an angel and actually be in a wonderful parental voice to souls of all ages. Yes, we need fathers. Yes, we need a shepherded communion. Yes, we need times of getting together and talking about our highs and lows and the mistakes that we've made and how we've disappointed ourselves in God's presence. We need all those things, and they, they sh those things should be shepherded with a voice who cares. And it's good for people to rest in being pastored by a man heart. Adam was held responsible, regardless of what Eve did. Ahab was just too flippin' lazy to say no to Jezebel. It was his fault. He was the king. He was running the temple of Israel, of Yahweh, but he still had a bunch of other idols going on at the same time. He was the king with the whole priesthood right next to him. Remember, the men are judged more harshly and you all can be the ones that train every soul how to do some basic good parenting for both genders, regardless of the ages, just to talk about the awe of the fact that in the next realm, we're all going to be single like angels. So you don't have your own person to touch and play with. So all of the pleasure in physical interaction stuff is going to go away and reformed in a better way that we can't even imagine yet. So train the souls for awe for the future, for the awe for the afterlife, for amazement about what's going on in the spirit realm, and for candid, fun commentaries about how we feel, how our thoughts go, what's going on in the visible thought mind, what's going on in the atmosphere of physiology, arousal, etc., etc., but also how our, re our relationships with other people need to be seen in the picture of either being single like Jesus or being in covenant with a person that we're assigned to. That's it. There's no in between. There's no in between. I mean, if the Holy Spirit's God and we can receive the Holy Spirit, then we should be able to get a collective answer from God and not make a bunch of dopey decisions. That's my song. I'll repeat it all day long. Check out those four things. How do seven spirits worse come in? What is obeying the gospel all about? The proofs of Jesus. What are they? And have the courage to be honest and gutsy about all things, including the human physiology and even the arousal of the penis and the vulva. 
It's cool stuff. It's designed by a really cool mind. It's awesome stuff. Vulva like a flower. Penis like a pole. No? It's fine. The first one is like a flower and has many different types. And the second one is a little boring and is more all the same. But the greatest thing is what's going to happen beyond this life. And if people aren't actually high on that stuff, they're going to get high on the sweetest things of this realm, which includes some of that. So, Chakana Tosta, this is for you, the Brotherhood, to nurture human souls into a great heart for parenting and all issues. Go, go, go.